All the fathers, happy Father's Day. This is the day that the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad. Let's be sure to give special honor and congratulations to every father, every grandfather, every godfather, every servant good father, every stepfather, anyone who stands in the role of a father. We're going to honor and celebrate these mighty men of God today. I greet you this morning in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who has allowed our golden moments to roll on just a little while longer. It is with joy and happiness that I greet you on this blessed Sunday morning. Please be so kind if you will to meet me in Luke chapter 15, beginning at verse 11. There was a word to lift and encourage our hearts on this blessed Sunday morning. Luke chapter 15, beginning in verse 11. You'll find these words recorded. As we pause for a word from our sponsor, God is a good God. His truth endures for all generations, and his mercy is exceedingly great. And we thank him this morning for all that he has done, for the blessings that are pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Luke chapter 15, the gospel writer tells us these encouraging words this morning. And he said, a certain man had two sons. And the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. And he divided unto them his living. And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country. And there wasted his substance with riotous living. And when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in that land, and he began to be in want. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into the fields to feed swine. And he would fain have filled his belly with the husk that the swine did eat, and no man gave unto him. And when he came to himself, he said, How many hired servants of my father's have bread enough and to spare, and I perish with hunger? I will arise and go to my father and will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee. I am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight and am no more worthy to be called thy son. But the father said to his servants, Bring forth the best robe and put it on him and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet. And bring hither the fatted calf and kill it, and let us eat and be merry. For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found, and they began to be merry. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading, hearers and doers of his holy and precious and powerful word. Turn to God our Father, we come and say thank you for your goodness and your mercy. It's no goodness of our own that we're standing here today. It's just the hand of God that's upon us. God, please continue to rain down your power from on high that your word might come alive and bring about amazing changes and transformation in all of our lives on this blessed Sunday morning. It's in the mighty, precious name of Jesus that we pray. And all of God's family said, wherever you are, amen, hallelujah, and bless the Lord. Pray with me for a little while on this blessed Father's Day Sunday from the subject of Father's Love. This passage in Luke chapter 15 has often been titled the parable of the prodigal son, but I want to, if you can help me this morning to examine this text a little closer, and we'll see that the emphasis is not really on the sin of the prodigal son, it's more on the love of the father. I want to talk about a father's love on this blessed Father's Day. The text began by saying, and he said, a certain man had two sons. The Bible said, blessed is a man who has his quiver full of children. 
And the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me. Come on, help me, fathers. Begin right here. We've heard these words often, give me. And the father divided unto the younger son his living. I like the way the New American Standard put it. And the father divided his estate among the younger son. Biblical research tells us that in Deuteronomy chapter 21, verse 19, that the elder son would get two-thirds of the estate and the younger son would get one-third, but this would not normally happen until the father had passed or the father had died. And so it was legal, but it was not loving to ask for your portion of the estate, which you have not worked and labored and sweated for, but the father listened. I'm, I'm preaching right here. The father listened to his request. The father could have given a long dissertation and said, you did not labor, you did not sweat, you did not perspire to develop and to gain this estate. But nonetheless, he gave part of his estate to the younger son. And not many days after. So the younger son in one sense rebelled. But following the rebellion, he relocated. He gathered all that he had, took his journey into a far country. How many know that the journey in the far country does not mean you relocate geographically because the journey in the far country begins in the heart, soul, and in the mind. You can be at a home but still be in a far country based on your state of mind. And there in the far country, he lived the life of Riley. The Bible even said, he wasted his substance in riotous living, wasteful living. He rebelled, he relocated, and now he's riotous. He's in wasteful living. He spent all that he had, and there arose a mighty famine in that land, and he began to be in want. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country and sent to the fields to feed the swine. It was against the law of a Jewish child to be dealing with swine, we call them pigs and hogs, because they were viewed as defiled and unclean. But such was the case when we rebel and relocate and end up in riotous living. And he would have filled his belly with the husk of the food there that they fed the pigs, but nobody even offered that to him. Can I get a witness? I'm trying to get to a father's love. And when he himself came to himself, he said, wait a minute, my father has servants who have food to eat and some that is left over. I will arise and go to my father. Now, come on, help me out right here. If that father had been difficult, harsh, and not loving, it's a great possibility that the son would not have want to return to the house if there wasn't love. While it's Father's Day, we want to be sure that we give honor and congratulations and respect and care and attentiveness to our fathers on this day, June the 21st. It is Father's Day. And my fathers, let me say early on in this message, you are priority. The U.S. mail confirms what I'm saying. You are not just snail mail. You are priority. I, I need you to know that today. If you already know, I need to remind you and encourage you. You are priority. Spiritually, Joshua 24, 15 says, if it seem even unto you to serve the Lord, Choose you this day whom you will serve, whether the gods on the other side of the flood in whose land we dwell or the God of the Amorites. But as for me in my house, we will serve the Lord. So obviously, my brothers, you and I are priority when it comes to spiritual things. But not only are we priority when it comes to spiritual things, we are priority when it comes to psychological and sociological and even economically. I got statistics to back up what I'm saying. Allow me to share just a few startling and shocking statistics. 
When there is no father in the house, high school students are two times as likely to drop out before they graduate when there is no father in the house. 85% of youth in prison and incarcerated today come from houses that have no father. Come on, help me out. I'm talking about a father's love and a father's priority. More ugly, startling statistics. Girls who live in a fatherless homes are 100% higher at risk of suffering from obesity, four times likely to be pregnant with child before the age of 20. These are merely a few of the startling statistics. My brother, on this Father's Day, as we speak of father's love, you are priority male man of God. 57% of fatherless homes in the United States involve all those of us that are African Americans. 44% of children living in a home without a father find themselves living in poverty as opposed to 12% of two parent households. One last ugly one that I keep moving. When there's no father in the house, you suicide is twice as high as other families that have both parents in the home. Sometimes dad may seem to be strict, may seem to give you a hard time, but let me help you to be encouraged this morning and to remind you just how blessed you are if you are blessed to be living with your father in the same household. I checked the ugly census bureau statistics last night. Last night on June the 20th, over 24 million 700,000 children went to bed without a father in the house. No, he was not on travel. He was not on the night shift. He was not away on business. He does not live with them. 72% of America says that one of our greatest social problems in today is the fact when there's no father in the house. You, my brother, are priority. Sometimes folk may not recognize it. You may not feel loved, cared for, and appreciated, but I stop by to tell you this blessed Sunday morning, you are priority. Child of God, you are blessed and highly favored. As I look back over my own family, on my mother's side and my father's side, I look back with a broken heart because many and most of my cousins grew up in a house where there was no father. I and my four sisters were among the fortunate because dad was far from perfect, but dad was present in the house. I saw a man get up and go to work every day that put a place in my heart early on that real men do provide for their families. For the Bible says this, that man that is able to provide for his family and does not provide, he is less than an infidel. I'm talking about a father's love. He makes all the difference in the world. Quiet as it's kept, it may be a best kept secret, but fathers, we are priority. Come on, help me preach, teach this morning. When the young man came to himself, I like the way the New American Standard put it, when he came to his senses, sometimes the world attracts us allures us, entices us away from home with all of these laws and rules and guidelines and harsh things like love and discipline. The far country seemed to be so excited. And then we get to the far country and realize that it's not all that it's cracked up to be for the world promises joy, happiness, and fellowship and good times, but it often leads to heartbreak, emptiness, and disappointment. But I'm glad to repent that not only did this son rebel, not only did he relocate, he must have been realizing and he reflected when he came to himself. He said, wait a minute, my father has hired servants, had bread enough to eat and to spare, so the father must have been a generous, loving and caring person because even the servants were well taken care of. Surely, if a father would take good care of the servants, he would surely continue to take care of his son. Now, mind you, the father never asked the son to leave. The son 
ask the father to give him his portion of the estate and he decided to leave. Be careful how you leave home, you may have to return. My father was a man of love. I tried to remember how many spankings we receive and I declare I, I can't remember more than one or two if that. But he didn't have to spank his voice. Now I must say I remember my dear dad. It's been about nine and a half years ago. Every now and then it feels like it was just last week because I miss him. Can't talk to him. Can't go to see him. He said Wayne come on down here and see me. I need to talk to you. I got something important to tell you. It was not really that important. He just wanted to see his son. What a blessing. Fathers are a blessing. Fathers are a gift from God. You and I could be among the 24,700,000 who had no father, but one good thing I must raise up about the African-American family is this. If the biological father was not there, then grandfather would step in, Uncle John would step in, Uncle Leroy would step in. Somebody was going to father you. Somebody was going to try to activate Proverbs 22, 6 to bring you up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord to show you the way to become a man or woman of God. The fathers of Fort Foot that I know make it hard for the boyfriends because the fathers here show so much love. Your daughter ought not ever question your love for her. You ought to show her so much love. It sets the bar. It sets the standard for what the boyfriend, the fiance, and what the future husband must live up to if he can. I'm talking about a father's love. I was blessed again to have my Joseph Nelson, my biological father, but also I was blessed to have grandfather, right, Reverend Robert H. Lyles. And later on, Reverend Everett Wayne Cup kind of adopted me and my sisters. We had a third father. And then I got to Mount Sinai Baptist Church and Reverend Dr. David Durham, the late Reverend Dr. David Durham, he kind of adopted me and I had yet another father. And then there was Deacon Morris Lucas, the late Deacon Morris Lucas. He adopted me. God must have really knew that I needed a whole lot of fathering. I needed a whole lot of help. And then I got to Fort Foot, met a godly man by the name of the late Deacon Vincent Hodge. Another father figure along this journey. God blesses us with fathers. Maybe you can testify today how somebody has fathered you along this way. How somebody has been a source of strength, a role model, an example, a confidant, a mentor, discipler. You along this Christian journey. Even we got to pray, and I'm going to get back to the text in a minute. When it comes to child custody, for some reason, the courts, in many cases, overwhelmingly give custody to the mom as if automatically the mom can do a better job at raising a child. So we got work to do as we love and walk in grace on this blessed Father's Day. I'm talking about a father's love. I no notice what it says here in verse 18. I will arise and go to my father. My is a personal possessive pronoun. Even though he was in the far country, he still remembered, he still claimed and was aware of the love of his father. I will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee. I am no worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy servants. He, he rebelled, he relocated, he remembered, and now he's repenting. And the text says in verse 20, he arose and came to his father. If he had merely repented and been remorseful, he would have still been lost, hungry, about to die in the far country. He said, here I am, I'm perishing. Verse 17, New American Standard says, I'm dying with hunger and my father's servants are eating well. See, sometimes when you leave home where there's love and provisions, end up in a far country where there's dying and hunger. He arose and came to his father. Verse 20 has the conjunction but. It's a conjunction of contrast. In fact, some have said it's a divine conjunction of contrast. The story is about to change. Here he was, had wasted all of his estate, 
Deuteronomy chapter 21, verse 18 through 21 said he had embarrassed a family, perhaps even the community, and he qualified to be stoned. But I got good news here as we see the love of the father. I told you earlier, it's often called the parable of the prodigal son. Early on, there was a lost sheep. And they rejoiced when they found the lost sheep because the shepherd left the 99 that was safe and sound and went to get the one lost sheep. That's the picture of our heavenly father, Jesus Christ. And heaven rejoiced when one person comes out of darkness and comes to know Jesus Christ. Verse 8 through 10, we see that there was not only the lost sheep, there was a lost coin. Allow me to slow down and teach for just a moment. When the Jewish woman was married, she was given a wedding band of 10 precious silver coins. It was a tragedy if you were to lose your wedding band. She turned on a candlelight, swept the house clean, and sought until she found it. This trilogy here, the, the, the lost sheep, the lost coin, but now it elevates to focus on the lost son and the love of the father. And when they found the sheep and the coin, they rejoiced because that which was lost has now been found. John Wesley, the great reformer of the Methodist church said, our sole purpose as the church of the living God, for, for in every other church that named the name of Jesus Christ is to seek and to search for the lost. Let's spend all of our time, not in meetings, not fussing, not debating, not dialoguing, but seeking those that are lost. Can I get a witness? I'm trying to talk about the love of a father. But when he was yet a great way off, in order for the father to see the son a great way off, he must have been looking for the son. Now he could have been bitter, he could have been angry, he could have been full of hostility, but he was looking for his son a great way off and the father saw him. That's my boy. And the text said, when he saw him, he was not filled with rage or anger. He was filled with compassion. Can I get a witness up in here this morning? God is a loving father. He sees us struggling in the midst of life, trials and tribulation. And he certainly, like this father here, is full of compassion. He cares. He's concerned. He's considerate. He's more loving than legal. He's more helpful than harsh. He had compassion for his son that had taken his part of the estate that he never earned. And the text goes on to say something else exciting. I hope this morning you can feel the power and the emotion of this text as we see the focus on this loving father. Sometimes we give all the credit to mom, and mom does a phenomenal job. We know moms are great, but today is Father's Day. I'm talking about the love of a father. He not only was full of compassion, the text says here in verse 20, he ran. If you did your biblical research, you'd find out that stately, wealthy, older gentlemen, elder men, did not run. They had a stately walk or gait. But he was so excited to see his son that had gone away and wasted his living and riotous living. He ran to meet him. God is just waiting for you and me to cry out and ask for forgiveness. He'll run to meet us. He's excited. He moved with compassion, grace, and mercy. He ran and fell on his neck not to accuse him, not to attack him, not to question him, but he fell on his neck and kissed him. I'm talking about the love of a father. I used this illustration before, but it's so relevant in my mind. Back in 1976, when I fell in love with Miss Sheila Marie Countess at that time, I was going on a Sunday morning to pick her up for church in my father's new 1976 black-on-black -black Chrysler Cordova that he just got a few days ago, and it reluctantly gave me the keys to the car. I was driving, profiling so carefully, going to pick up the love of my life, 
And I came across the Kia Swamp Bridge and I just touched that accelerator and that Hemi kicked in and twisted that 1976 black on black Chrysler Cordova into the first guardrail I could find. Boom! I said, oh my God, he gonna kill me. I done wrecked the car that he just got, had it all simonized, waxed up. I drove on slowly after I got out the car to check the damage. It sounded like it tore the right part of the back fender totally off the car, but fortunately it hit where the piece of metal was there and I got back in the car, prayed all the way to pick up Miss Sheila. And finally, it felt like three days later when I got back to the house, I said, Dad, I, I, I got a problem. And I was stuttering because I was afraid that I would be beaten with many stripes. I said, D -d 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 Dad, I, 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 I hit the bridge. He came out and looked at the car and said, Son, I can get another black on black Chrysler called Dover, but I can't get another son. I said, What? I'm talking about a father's love. If an earthly father knows how to give good things, how much more does our heavenly father? Man of God, you are essential personnel. You oftentimes have to be the first responder. You need to stay in that house, pray in that house, call on the name of the Lord. Your children ought to hear your voice, not just giving orders and instruction. Your children need to hear your voice because you are a man of prayer. Oh, if I could hear my father pray one more time. If I could hear my father calling on God, bless my wife, bless my children. Leave them in the way that is right. Put a hedge of protection all around them. Be a man of God. Be a Joshua 24, 15 man. By example, not by coercion, but by living example of what a man of God ought to be. You and I have to stand in the gap. We are responsible for their spiritual development. Train up a child in the way that it should go. Don't leave it all to mom. Be the man of God. Lead in worship. Help me out, Brother Jacob, back in Genesis 35. Jacob began to talk to God, and God said, go up to Bethel and make an altar there. What I'm saying, brother, this morning as I get excited, you and I must lead in worship. Don't send the family to worship. Lead the family in worship. And Jacob, talk to God before you try to talk to wife and children, my brother. We need to talk to God. See what God is saying. He will order our steps for you already know the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord as I walk upright before God. So my family my wife, so my children. Come on, help me out, sister wife, today. It's Father's Day, and one of the greatest gifts you can give your children is to honor your husband, honor their father. Hmm. None of us are perfect. Don't pull down that father today or tomorrow. Matter of fact, not even this week, the rest of the month. You remember when? You were excited when it was time for the husband to come home. You'd be at the door waiting with love and open arms for your mighty man of God that you prayed for. The father of your children. Can I get a witness? Look at this mighty man of God, this African warrior, this African prince. He's all of that. I know you got him in prayer. He won't have to cook today unless he just loves to cook and is a culinary chef. He should be honored today. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 1 and 2 says, Children, obey your parents. 2 says, Ephesians 6, Honor your father and your mother. You may not always agree. You don't have to always agree or like what they say or what they do, but forever and a day you have to honor your father and your mother. Come on, help me out this morning. I'm talking about a father's love. He saw him a great way off. Can I get a witness? Many of our great fathers here at the fort and others around the world have made phenomenal sacrifices for the wife and the children. While they are asleep, we're trying to work things out. It, it, it's, come on, it's Father's Day. Encourage that man of God. Have you told him that you love him lately? 
Have you told dad that you really loved him when you didn't need anything, didn't want anything? Have you told dad you are glad that he's your father? You are not among the 24,700,000 who are fatherless. You may be accustomed to having your father around or have him around if he's not gone to glory, but you probably have not had a conversation with a woman, boy, or girl who has never seen their earthly father in life or are distant or estranged from him. You and I may have been guilty of taking that kind of love for granted, but talk to somebody who never had the privilege of having a father in their life. It makes phenomenal, it makes spiritual, it makes psychological, it makes economical difference as a man. Here's the saying, so goes the family, so goes our nation. So goes the father, so goes the family, so grows the nation. You look at the ugly situation in our country today when the attack seems to be on the fathers, the African-American men in specific, the enemy says, if I can destroy the father and the man, I can destroy the family. If I can destroy the family, I can destroy this nation. But how long will it take Satan in the world to know you tried to hang us? You had a massacre in Tulsa, Oklahoma, but still we are here and we ain't going nowhere. We're going to stand on the word of God. On Christ the solid rock I stand. All of the ground is but sinking sand. If God be for us, who can be against us? Stand up, my brother. Not in my own strength. Not in your own strength, but stand up on the word of God. Be the father that God has called you to be. I said earlier, it's going to take some prayer. Fathering is not easy. But with the help of God, we can show the love of this father here in Luke chapter 15. I remember waking up in the middle of the night, somewhat concerned, till I heard my father's voice downstairs. And now that dad was in the house, I fell fast asleep, knowing that all perimeters had been secured we were safe and sound because daddy was home. Oh, you and I, I hope and pray, have fond memories of times gone by when daddy showed up. Down in the country, dad would come out and shine up the car with some simonized wax, put some Vaseline on your legs and shine it up. We going to DC to see granddad. It was a great day. Somebody like me can testify like you can testify also that We've never had a day of hunger, never been raggedy clothes, might not have lived in a mansion or in a state, but we had a roof over our head, food on our table, and clothes on our back, because daddy was a provider. I remember my granddad told my mama some years ago, my daddy's nickname it was Jake. He said, Jake does a lot of things that I don't really like, but he takes care of his children and his wife. Be the best father that God has called you to be. There'll be a crown of glory awaiting for you. I'm talking about the love of a father. He ran, fell on his neck, and kissed him. Father, don't be afraid to show some emotion sometime. Hug that daughter so tight, she'll never have to think about ever not being loved. Hug that son also while you can. He embraced him on his neck and even gave him a holy kiss. I'm talking about a father's love. The son began to confess and repent. He said, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight, I'm no more worthy to be called thy son. But the father said to the servants, the father interrupted his confession. The father interrupted his repentance and said, wait a minute, to all the servants, bring forth the best robe. Now you know in biblical times who wore the best robe, not just another robe, but bring my son one of my robes, the best robe. 
put it on him, put a ring on his finger. The ring in biblical times represented sonship. I'm not taking you back as a servant. You're received back as my son. Put a ring on his hand, shoes on his feet because servants did not wear rings, nor robes, nor shoes. Bring forth the fatted calf and kill it. Let us eat and be merry. I hope you see and sense and feel the power of a father's love. It goes deeper than the eye can see, more than heart can feel, more than hands can do, more than feet can walk. Something about a father's love. Jesus on the old rugged cross at Calvary cried out, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. Something about a father. Bring forth the fatted calf. If the father had been legalistic and judgmental, it would have been a funeral. But there was not a funeral going on. There was a feast going on. Help me, somebody. When I think of the goodness of the Lord and all that is done for me, my soul cries out, glory, hallelujah. God, I thank you for my father. God, I thank you for my daddy. He made a way for me. He encouraged me. Never abused he was a man of God. Blessed to have my father-in-law, another good father for my wife. If she looked like, even thought she needed something before she could get the request out of her mouth, it had already arrived on Amazon.com, UPS, FedEx. It was at the door. Fathers ought to be celebrated today. We don't have a honeydew list today. It's Father's Day. Lay back in your recliner and be served with a smile on your face. It's Father's Day. Be bold. Be brave. Stand up. Be the man of God. Love that wife. Love those children like never before. I'm talking about a father's love. What a blessing. What a joy. Children, respect and honor. If you're out of town, Pick up that phone, FaceTime, look in his face, tell him that you love him. Tell dad that you appreciate him. Some things my dad said when I was 16 and 18 didn't really seem to make a whole lot of sense. Then I got six hours away in Glenville, West Virginia in college and all of a sudden I didn't realize my father had gotten wise so fast, almost overnight. Oh, the lessons that he learned. My dad had a thing for cars. Sometimes we'd get in a car and ride real slow down 301, down Route 5. He would just talk and talk and teach and model what it meant to be a man. Let me move in this area softly. Sometimes great moms and mothers that you are, great wives that you are, sometimes you got to Take a soft step back or side. Let the father help to raise that son in particular. It really takes a father to help raise that son, but not only the son, the daughter. Psychologists would tell us, psychologists certify this fact that I'm about to share. A father is not only obviously important to becoming a son and a young man, he's critically important to the life of that daughter. That daughter does much better in childhood, adolescence, young adulthood, and throughout her life if there's a good, strong relationship with her father because she don't have to spend her life looking for love in all the wrong places. A father's love is so powerful. I'm slowing down on purpose as I come to a close. But this day, if he likes the gospel bread, you can bake it or fry it or order it out from Royal Farm. But whatever he needs today, be at his beckoning call to show how much you love and appreciate your father. And if your father's gone into glory, Slow down for a moment on this busy June 21st, two days after Juneteenth, as we were free. 
of slavery in Texas. Fathers take a moment to teach their children about some history that they may not be aware of as I come to a close for the second time. Do your little research on Juneteenth, how in Texas in 1865, they finally announced that the slaves were free. Something about Texas and my Texas friends. Even in the midst of the massacre, the Black Wall Street, we still rise to prominence. Fathers, with the help of God, as he told Joshua, be thou strong and very courageous. Fathers, after you have prayed and talked to God, you may have to make some difficult, hard decisions that are for the best of your family. Wives and children may or may not understand, but if you have heard from God, God holds you and me responsible to be the head of this family in love. May God bless you. May heaven smile upon you as you focus today on the love of a father. If you're here today and have never given your life to Jesus Christ, he awaits you like the father of the prodigal son. He sees you afar off. He is waiting to run to give you the gift of salvation, to put a ring, as it were, a robe of righteousness on you, to cover you with his precious blood. Behold what manner of love, says 1 John 3, the Father hath bestowed upon us that we should be called children of God, and it does not yet appear what we shall be, but when he shall appear, we shall be like him. One glad morning, one glad noonday, we're going to see our heavenly father. I want to see those eyes that look like balls of fire, that hair that look like lamb's wool. I want to look and gaze upon those feet that look like polished brass as if they've been burned in a furnace. I just want to hear my father say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a few things. Sit on down and rest a little while. Father, I stretch out my hand to thee. No other help I know. If thou would draw thy hand for me, where shall I go? Father, I thank you for sending your only begotten son, Jesus Christ, to die on an old rugged cross. If that is your heart's desire today, to meet Jesus Christ, our loving, prayerful, caring counselors are waiting to receive your call at the number shown on the screen. They'll be more than glad and happy to talk with you and share with you the plan of salvation or to share with you in a word of prayer. Know that God loves you. Know that you are precious in the sight of the Lord. May God bless you. May heaven smile upon you. Now with a hymn that's more than able to keep us from falling, and to present us faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God, our Savior, be dominion, majesty, glory, and power, both now, henceforth, and forevermore. And all of God's family said, Amen, hallelujah, and bless the name of Jesus.